Elizabeth from the Nail Hub is joining me for this great video. We are going to do a French nail. She's going to do it in gel and I'm going to do it in acrylic with products you can buy at the store. Let's get started. Liz and I just got back from the local beauty store and we purchased all this stuff. As a matter of fact, we kind of posed as non-professionals, yeah. just two girls wanting to do some nails together and they didn't question either one of us. No, they literally <laughs> said nothing. No, they sold us all this stuff. I have a professional card with this particular store, but I didn't even present it because I wanted to purchase this just as you would if you didn't have a license. And this is what we bought. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get started and I'm going to do the acrylic and we're going to start with these forms. These forms <laughs> look scary. Liz said she's never seen these before. These are the first kind of forms that I ever started. These are the exact same forms. Oh, you always got to ruin the first one yeah. just to get in. Um, I just these, don't even know what kind of length of nail you can do with well, those. Well, not a very long nail. Um, and there's not much to them. Look at them. They're yeah. so different than our forms nowadays. But they're apparently all we have. Right. And I forgot. I'm going to buff it first. So I got their files. The files look decent. Yeah, got some nice files. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do my acrylic French nail first. And we're going to gab. And then she's going to do hers. So I'm going to prep this nail with one of the files that I bought. I've taken off my acrylic already. Yeah, we removed a nail each. Yeah. We're saying how funny our fingers look without them. We got so... team stubby right now. <laughs> Bring yours in here so they can see. <laughs> yeah, so this will be interesting to see. Yeah, we just wanted to, you know, obviously we have the education behind, which obviously you can get on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, you trained yeah, basically before, on YouTube? Yeah, before I even went to nail school. I mean, that's how I found my, my passion and got you know, whatever you would consider professional level training yeah. direct from YouTube videos. Wow. Is that what you kind of got inspired to that you even thought of as a profession Absolutely. to do? Or? I mean, I've loved nails since I was, I think I've worn pink and white since I was 13 and a half. I mean, I used to take my allowance and go get my nails done. <laughs> You're one of those kids. Oh yeah. I saved up and my mom told me, you're never going to be able to get dressed for school in the morning with nails that long, but I did it <laughs> anyway. And I've loved them ever since. But it wasn't until I was much older that I finally found ways to learn and I never thought about going to nail school not in a million years but yeah I would say it was a big catalyst for me looking to become a professional that's amazing <laughs> there's some really good educators on there oh yes there is actually <laughs> Very funny. okay so this is the product that I bought I thought it was cute they even had a little open to see the contents and there's the contents right there that was good I did find this interesting it says right on the box though for professional use only. We were non-professionals. Right. Well, that's something that we have to define, right? Is yeah. What's a professional? Yeah. 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 And you know, um, that is a good question. I've seen a lot of people who were not licensed, you might say, even just sending me pictures of their work and mm -hmm. they were fantastic and they never had any formal training whatsoever. Completely. I think the biggest thing that is the challenge is people who are running a business. Yeah need that support right because they're actually doing this for a living whereas people who aren't doing this for a living you know don't need that professional pricing don't need that kind of support for their business yep that's a very valid point look at this wow a little dvd <laughs> dvd yep. is it a dvd yes it, it is get with the qr right? code program who has a dvd player nowadays i don't, I don't. Know. is it small enough for your cell phone there's a little dvd <laughs> insert on your cell phone or something that's so funny and look at this little brush oh it comes with a brush yeah it did yeah little rough okay what the heck is this that, uh that's the powder i'm gonna suspect oh a little booklet everything's little it's kind of it's cute. bait like how many sets of nails are you supposed to be able to do with that <laughs> not many okay and there's a primer pen i'm not used to using that and here's my liquid. Okay, I'm going to put my liquid. I'm going to put, oh. Oh, it's all sealed. Yeah, it's all sealed, which is good. It's got the inhibitors in there. I better put the lid on it. Just they should give I you a big bottle of this. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because you use so little of this. What you is it, dehydrator? Need, this is the dehydrator, yeah. You need so little. And then teeny, I tiny think there's, little. There's the same amount of liquid to monitor to the dehydrator, wow. which is pretty funny. Itty bitty acrylic powders. Yeah, but I got three colors. So I'm just gonna pour them into the you have to have the little dishes, otherwise you can't you can't really fit this yeah. you could. How do you get it back in the little bottle? Yeah, like 
How to get the powder back in the bottle? Yeah. Oh, that's not happening. Funnel? Yeah, I guess. Doesn't come with one. Nope. I will say we spent over $500 for all these products. And I believe my set will only give you, uh, what did it say, one set, I think? I think it was two or three, but I okay. don't see how that's going to happen with these teeny tiny. No, I don't see that either. Um, what color is this? Yeah, I couldn't believe how expensive it was. Yes. I mean, when you think about it, if you go get a set of nails done, I guess if you're charging, that's about 10 new sets if it's 50 bucks a new set. Right. Um, they don't really, s oh, it does specify the color on the bottom. So this is my white. Yeah, white talking, and clear often looks very similar. Yeah, you're talking 150, 175 bucks a set <laughs> to do this on yourself. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But people do love doing nails that yeah. much. I mean, if this is all you have, I mean, I would do it. More if power to really you. really passionate about it and yeah. trying to get what I need out of it, I would do it. Yeah. Okay, there's my dehydrator. Did you do your own nails before you went to nail school? When I got married when I was 18, mm -hmm. I went to the store and got some tips, glued it on, smoothed it over, mm -hmm. painted it, done. I didn't even know about the fill-in part. Right. I did think to myself, though, boy, wouldn't that break? It seems like it could be Because it was just flimsy. a tip with glue. Yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't know anything about yeah. structure or anything. But I just did think that myself. That Did you not. do press-ons? Oh, uh, no. No, I never no? did. I, never, I, my, I was pretty poor. I didn't have money for stuff Oh, like I loved press-on nails. Right. Okay. I've never used a primer pen. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. You never used it either? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, I can smell it. Very weird. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like an acid primer pen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there Stinky it is. Cheese. There Stinky cheese. There it is. Stinky cheese smell. That old smell. Yeah. Right? Hmm. Forms, where did they go? Okay, now I'm ready for the... I hate these forms, I will say. <laughs> I think I, I can mean, see why. I only know that because I've used them before. I mean, I loved them when I was a kid because when I was first learning, that's what we had. But now they we look have... like they're for painting French, you know, like where you have yeah. a little guide and More you like peel little, it off. Uh, yeah, you're right. More like a guide rather than. Oh, this is going to be that. interesting. <laughs> you know, that's It'll the thing is, job. as a professional, I mean, you can really use anything. Once, yeah. once you've got that education, you can really use anything out there. Yeah. Wow, you did that really well. I've done this before. Holy smokes. Yeah. I'm glad you're going first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually fit pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Maybe I don't hate it so bad anymore. Maybe now that's the trick. I hated them because I didn't know how to use it. Actually, yeah, probably. I've had a lot of practice. Yeah. So now I'm okay. Okay. Let's see how these brushes measure out. Oh, man. I'm not used to monomer. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's that's a bit right. smelly. Look at this little Acrylic brush. Acrylic nail techs love their monomer. Yeah, we do. We don't even smell it after. I can't really smell that. Oh, it's I'm about to do the potent test. wafting. Oh, it's potent. Pretty potent. Yeah. I can't even. I don't even. <laughs> I don't, I'm just so used to that smell. Uh, what about you, cameraman? Is it drowning you out yet? I can't smell it where I am. Not at all. Well, that's good. That is good. Okay. I did buy uh, another brush because usually my experience is these brushes that come in the kit don't really last very long. And being that I was doing a French, I mean, it's only one nail. I should be able to squeak it out. Right. But I did get another brush just in case. And of course, the French line is so particular. Um, if you don't have a good brush, it's very difficult to do a French line. So I'm going to say I bought this extra brush just in case I need it. And this is supposed to be a sable brush. Hmm. This one looks more synthetic, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, it's got a little packing tape. Whenever you get a brush, even the cheaper ones like this, they have a bit of a packing tape in them. You just see if you can get it out. But look, at there's no tip on that. Hmm. There's no, it's just a flat brush, like a nail polish brush. Yeah. Okay, so I will. Yeah, I think it's honestly it looks like it's a just brush, as bad right? as the one that's in there. Yeah. Okay, well, this will be interesting. Now, are you going to do a reverse French? Oh, you're going to paint it on. I'm going to do paint on French. Okay, so. We couldn't find a no, we pink couldn't hard find gel. Any, I mean, yeah, white hard white. gel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my white there. Okay, maybe I'll do a reverse. Oh, no, i got to use the brush that came. This is the brush that came in the kit. I'm going to use that. So I was a little ambitious because I said we were going to do French, and I look at this brush. I don't know if I can get a French out of this. So I'm going to actually opt for the reverse French mm -hmm. because at least I can file the sharp line. This is not going to create a sharp line. This is actually a really horrid brush. And that really is case in point of professional products. Yep. But we're just going to wing this here. Okay, I'm going to use the pink.
Not bad. No, actually, the product doesn't seem so bad, and the color is actually very pretty. More of a translucent pink? Yeah, it's a little bubbly. I can see some bubbles in there, mm -hmm. but... Well, the brush probably isn't helping. No, no, the brush is pretty bad. A pro brush is actually very smooth, and it doesn't flare out, and it's not fluffy and irregular. These bristles are extremely mm -hmm. irregular, and they're flying in every direction. It's quite horrible, actually. Yeah, it looks like one of those paintbrushes from a kid's art kit. It really does. Actually, that's a very good way to describe it. And I would imagine those bristles would be very cheap. Yeah. And that's what this feels like. So I'm just focusing on the cuticle right now. Make sure I can get... But you are really doing a nice job with that. Wow. Well, that would be just the... The experience behind it right yeah i mean part of this is product and part of this is um experience i and agree i think buying more of a product, it's experience it is buying a product is not going to make you a nail technician you still have to learn how to work it okay i'm just going to extend the nail bed a tiny little bit there looks pretty dang good susie <laughs> oh i'm so glad i there, i'm so glad the reverse was invented because if the reverse wasn't invented I'm going to look like a fool. Yep. Maybe they bought an at-home nail kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I you have new respect for DIYers. Totally, because they have to use this stuff, and yeah. it makes it very difficult for them. I think professional nail techs really take that for granted. We do. We have great products, and it really does take the talent that we develop and show it in its finest. Yep. You're absolutely right, actually. The DIY at home is going to have to work it a lot harder because they are literally putting this on delicately with a giant paintbrush. Mm -hmm. It's like um, doing dishes with boxing gloves on. You can't feel nothing. Yeah. It's quite horrendous, yeah. actually. I remember those days. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to let that dry a little. Mm -hmm. That's pretty high. <laughs> that seriously does look really good. It's all right. One point for experience. Yeah. Right? We'll do a little bit of filing there. So look at the brushes. The brush didn't start off great, but it's holding. Oh, I thought it was holding up a little bit. Oh, look how fluffy <laughs> it's getting. Look at that. It's pretty rough. Oh, no. It's like a broom now. It is kind of like that. It's got some hairs poking it's out. Terrible. I don't even do acrylic, and I don't think I Yeah, could. right. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I am just... And that's going to have to last me for the next one. Okay, so I'm trying to squish the crap out of there. Let's make sure there's no product in it. Yeah. Oh, it feels... You know, professional brushes are very smooth, mm -hmm. and this is like... Uh, it's like it's like curly hair. Oh. Yeah, you know how straight yeah. hair is so smooth? Like yeah. yours would be very smooth. And this is like trying to Rough. straighten. Yeah, it's like all curly and you're trying to smooth it out. Interesting. Yeah, like textured. You know, like gray hair sometimes? That's yeah, more yeah, of a yeah. texture. Wiry. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the product isn't so bad. I, I find that much better standard mm -hmm. than the brush. Brush is crap. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I could take this little form off. I could have not put it on at all, actually, because I could just build this out a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll just take this little, I'm just going to cover the little thingies. And then I'm going to take this. This is the reverse French. Mm -hmm. That actually looks like a nice nail file. Yeah, I have to say I'm surprised because usually um, non-professional nail files are crap. Mm -hmm. But these ones don't look so bad. But it is, um, what, what brand is this? Tropical Shine. I noticed that is seems to be the yeah, non-professional one. Here's another one, Beauty Secrets is the other one that I bought. Mm -hmm. This one is a 180. So how does it feel filing that compared to what you normally use? Well, it's not quite dry yet, which is good. It maybe sets a little slower when you're learning. That would be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a little slower in setting, and it feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's 
not quite cured and I'm a little impatient. When you're doing all of your, your whole hand, it'll be dry by the time you get to it, but we're just doing one. So we're waiting patiently. Apparently if you warm it up, it'll dry faster. Mm, if you rub it? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. Max from Exclusive Nail Couture, he actually told me to do that. And I thought, is he just lying to me so he can see me going around doing this and be like a joke? Mm -hmm. <laughs> gonna get her to rub all the nails yeah because i think they use that technique for competitions rubbing oh. on the nails you know to get it especially because they have such air conditioning in those competition rooms oh, good point. so they come up with all kinds of crazy yeah. tricks that right? makes perfect sense speaking of learning from experience yeah right yeah you get put on a freezing cold show floor for a competition <laughs> you learn quick that's when you learn really fast yeah, yeah. i might use this one still Okay, so I've just filed that all on. I'm just putting the form back on. Now you can reform it if you want, but I'm just gonna pop. Now it's really thick. Make sure I did it up far enough on the sides. Mm -hmm. These remind me of those sun visors like my mom used to wear, you know? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> 80s moms, I guess. Yeah, yep. gardening sun visor. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now I've made it pretty thick this way, so I can pretty much just slap the white on there. Yeah. Let me just see if I, this is always the scary part for nail tech. If you don't take away those sides properly, you're not gonna have a nice scoop up either side. So now I'm just getting picky. Okay, so let's attack this white. I'm gonna use the crappy little brush. Mm -hmm. Just gonna use it till it's done. I think it's almost done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put the white on there. Now with the white, you can actually put it right on top, but we'll just put it up against. I'm trying to release that. Get a little bit. And this is where you kind of want a brush to be good for you because you need to get a little bit of it and go up the corner. And that's where fine acrylic really does work for you because it will go up into a tiny little mm -hmm. and still stay one p strong pigmented color. You have better control. This is the moment if you don't have good control of your product it will show. So it doesn't matter that that's on top of there. We're just going to file that away anyway. If you make your pink really high, then it won't matter. You just got to make sure that you have enough on there. All smushed in. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you got a hair in there. Now. Yes. I'm not surprised. And you know, sometimes pro brushes will lose the odd hair sometimes too. But mm. once you... Get rid of the odd hair that might come up. If it's doing it all the time, it's not a good thing. Okay, it's taking a while to dry, which is good because then it gives me a long time to play and make sure that I get it exactly where I want it before mm -hmm. it cures. So if you're first learning, um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So I'm just sort of playing with it, make sure that I get what I want. Okay. That's good. So while this is drying, why don't maybe you get started on yours? Okay. Sounds good. So Elizabeth and I decided to switch seats so you can see clearly with all the cameras what she's about to do. So mm -hmm. go ahead, your so turn. Now it's my turn to do gel, right? So we bought a few things, obviously doing gel is a little bit different. So we had to get uh, some bonder or base coat, depending on what the line is, some builder gel. And then most importantly for gel nails is the lamp, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the only thing I would say that's the biggest difference between doing gel nails at home or professionally versus acrylic is the lamp really is important. Right. Otherwise you're just not gonna get those results. Yeah. You can't use a little tiny lamp for hard gel. You right. have to use a better lamp. In fact, this lamp was half our budget. It was over, a little over 500 and this yeah. was a $250 lamp. That's more than what I pay for some of my professional lamps. Yeah, this one this one really surprised me in the store. So yeah. this is pretty crazy to see. It's this expensive for a DIYer just to buy a professional quality lamp. Yeah, yeah so. I agree. All right, so let's Here, plug I'll, this in. Yeah. You can chuck that behind you if you yep. if you like to do that. Oh, should I do the Susie yeah. toss? Just... Oh, that was a good sound. It's kind of fun. 
not. I don't know. It's a little I love the Susie toss. Yeah, it's you can awesome. Throw that. That's not going to make. No, that's, that's lame. The box was more satisfying. <laughs> that's right. So let's just do our quick prep here. Get all the oil and bacteria off here. And nail form. I pretty much always already have my nail prepped, so yeah. I don't really need to get into that. Uh, These are a challenge. These suckers really are. They are, because they're so little. They're so little. There's nothing yeah. to hold on to. No. So I'm just going to try and line this up as well as I can. And because they're so little, there's nothing really to grab onto underneath. Right. I will be honest with you. We are using these different than we used to. When we used those 30 years ago, we never stuck them together. Mm. We let them flare out. So our nails were much more flared. See how we stuck these together? We never did oh, that. We left, left it, it open. We left it open like, ah. Uh, yeah. Well, the other so. thing too with kind of the less quality forms yeah. is sometimes if it has that center dot, right? You can just put it underneath and pinch yes. it closed. Yeah. So you and you can get a see little bit more. This does not have the center dot. Yeah. We've come a long way in forms. Yeah, I'm going to so take this off. You can just kind of do that so it stays closed if yeah. you're having issues with it. Yeah, she just yeah, stuck another form under there. Yeah. All righty. So I've never used this before, but we will try it for sure. Oh, God. This looks like a little thin, thin gel bonder. So I'm just going to take a teeny tiny amount of this because I'm not quite sure what it is or how it's going <laughs> to go on. It's funny. But it looks like it's some kind of gel base or something like that. And that's a good point that you're bringing up. When you are a professional and you buy professional products, you often go to seminars and you talk to professionals in who work with the product. You can phone them. You can email them. Once you have a professional license, you're able to have the direct information from the company themselves to show you exactly how you use it. Yep. When you just walk into a store, you're kind of just asking maybe the person, hopefully they know that works there. Yeah. And sometimes there's directions on here, like this says cure for one minute or 30 seconds in an LED. So I'll just right. go ahead and do that. It's a cute little lamp. It is a cute little lamp. That's the other thing about gel is it's like the hurry up and wait game, right? Yeah, it's like for sure. Apply and then you have to wait. Mm -hmm. Before you came, I put some questions up on Instagram. Ooh. And some people were saying, I was asking you guys what you wanted to see me and Elizabeth do. So a lot of it was do the nails that you can buy from a beauty store that doesn't have Which to have was a professional. A good one. Yeah, it's a great idea. Great, great one. And then this person asked... Um, um, you could do a convo about nail topics, how you got started, which we sort of covered that mm -hmm. in the beginning. And what, this is interesting. I never thought of this. What you know now that you wish you knew then. Oh, that's a tough one. You're done. I don't even know where I would start with that. I know. I thought that was a really good question. I don't know. That's a, that's a really tough question. I'd have to think about it for a minute because there's so many question. things. I think there's so many things that we take for granted that we know now. And also the other challenges, once you've been in the industry for a while, it's like you forget what you didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, and it's such a progression. I mean, I never knew I was even going to get into it. You just sort of go with the flow as it goes. I never knew that I was going to make so many great friends in the industry, such as clients or yep. other professionals that I'm meeting. Yep. You just think of it as a job, right? But it does turn out to be a very involved job in that way. You get to meet a lot of different people. And yeah. But hmm, I think the industry is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Oh, and this is a yeah. really crappy foil. It's a messy situation. Here. We'll try and open this up. Except pull tabs on there. Yeah, they no should. pull tab. Yes. And if I had a spatula, spatulas are usually really good for opening this or a right. pair of nippers if you have it. But with gel, um, the biggest thing is you want to have some rubbing alcohol to clean yeah. everything up. So little, it's a pretty color. It is a really pretty color. It's a little bit clearer than I thought, more translucent than I thought it was going to mm -hmm. be. But that is nice. And then I'm just going to take a little bit before I get started. Um, the nice thing about gel is you can work some into your brush. So if you don't have a great brush, right. you can get everything to kind of stick together more. How do you feel that brush is? It's going to be interesting. <laughs> it feels a little I bit rough. It's interesting to me because our brush, I think, from what we're both learning, is the probably the most important tool. I think so. Yeah. Um, and the most personal. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So also with gel, you know, depending on experience level, you kind of start to get familiar with the different types of viscosities of gel mm -hmm. thicknesses. So I like to just touch this and see, is it sticky? It looks very sticky to me. Right. Wow, this stuff is really sticky. Okay. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Yeah, that is really sticky. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? 
For me, I'm not used to sticky gel anymore. Right. I like stuff that's a little bit quicker as far as self-leveling. But for a non-professional, would the stickier be a better? Mm, not necessarily? Not necessarily. Sometimes I feel like it's... Because usually beginners, you know, are touching like yes. this and you just end up with a big mess of strings all over the place. Yes. So something that's a little bit silkier and self-levels a little bit nicer might be easier for someone to use. Right. But this isn't this isn't bad. Uh-huh. It's a pretty color. It I is a really pretty that. color. But it is very translucent. So yeah. we'll see if I can get this on here. Right. Another question from the same person actually mm-hmm. asked a lot of really good questions. Oh, good. The other question was, what surprised you the most when you became a professional? Oh, man, I had to have to say kind of the, the same thing as before, which is how big the industry is. It's it's crazy when you get into it, um, especially when you get into the side with the trade shows and the products and the manufacturing and it's well, huge. I agree. And I can even speak to it even further because when I started, I, I worked for the only mm-hmm. nail salon in town and nobody knew about nails. So for me, 30 years later, uh, the industry is huge. Is I huge. had no idea it would grow to that far. So still, though, I'd have to say what surprised me the most would be I didn't know that I'd probably have to get back to the same thing. I had no idea that I would have made so many great friends. Yeah. And it becomes such a personal, intimate job. Totally. And also being on YouTube and having the followers that I do, that, that blows me away. I never never anticipated anything like that. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the so industry is huge is, in person and online. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many nail lovers who, who yeah. knew. And and great for us because we put our YouTube videos out there for all you guys to see and learn. And it's just a great reach. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm it's doing a little amazing. bit of a cheat right now. Yeah. Well, that's not a cheat. That's a great skill. That's so a this, great trick. This helps, you know, with the gravity pulling it downwards. It'll help swoop and get me an apex, even if the product isn't really doing it for me. And it just makes the nail even smoother. So if you've got a really sticky product that isn't quite right, mm. this is kind of a quick cheat where yeah. you can use gravity to help you out. Yeah. So that kind of helps me just get the product where I want You're it. right. It is translucent, too. Yeah, it is. Which is okay. We're doing French, so. Yeah. So I can pinch this. Take that off. That's the thing with gel. Once you cure it, it's dry. It's dry. Yeah. Yep. Not bad. And then, to be honest, because I don't know how strong this is, I'd probably test it first. Right. But then you might need to adjust your other nails depending on if this is kind of got a rubbery feel to it, if it's yeah. very glass-like. Right. With gel, there's a lot of different feelings mm-hmm. after the gel has cured. So you kind of have to, I would test that out. Also, on that point, one thing that I do like doing is if you have some form paper... And I'll just show this if you're trying to figure out how this is going to work. So you can you can kind of test this out with acrylic. You don't really have. I mean, there are differences in acrylic from what I understand. Mm-hmm. But gel can vary a lot. Some of them are very rubbery. Yes, it varies a lot. Some yeah. of them are like glass, mm-hmm. you know. So you yeah. can actually test this oh. on a form first. Paint it a little bit before you get started right on your nail. Because once you're on your nail, it's a little bit more frustrating. Mm-hmm. But you can put a nice medium coating, cure this, and then... Play with it a little bit and see oh, if it's rubbery, if right. it's brittle, if it's going to snap on you. Yeah. And that way you kind of know how thick to make okay. your nails. That's a really good tip. Yeah. And I never thought of that. Yeah. So we can even show that after. Yeah. After that. But yeah, this looks not too shabby, to be it's honest. It's actually quite pretty. I actually really like the color. All right. Okay. Well, you might also just stay there. I was going to switch to file, but you might also stay there. I'm just going to grab my file. Let's just both shape these up. Okay. Do you need a, um, oh, no, you don't need a No, we don't, we'll I'm have, so used there's to no sticky layer with acrylic. You sticky, acrylics. Sticky, sticky. <laughs> or pardon me, you gels. You gels, you acrylics. You have to remove all your little sticky layers. Yeah. So we just bought these files. We grabbed them at the store, and um, I'm using, well, you can use a bit of a softer one, can't you? Yeah. I've got a 100 grit and a 180 grit, and I'll use the 100 grit for shaping this up. We're not going to use drills because, although they had one there. They did have an e-file there, which yep. I was surprised. Yeah. I didn't take a close look at it, but they did have one. And it was a bit pricey. I have to say, though, these nail files are really impressing me. Like, yep. these are nice mm-hmm. nail files. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. They're very expensive, though, so that's the one thing. So we're just going to file these up. Now, I have to take mine to a shine with the files. I will put a top coat on it because you want to make it very smooth when you're talking with acrylic. But she can leave the gel a little bit rough and she's going to put a gel top coat on and nuke it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make it as smooth as I can with the files that I bought. And then I'm going to put a clear coat on it to make it nice and shiny. How you doing? Oh, that's one thing.
thing. It files up way faster with them. Um, Gel. Gel is awful. Oh no, what's it doing? Is it crumbling away? It's just very, it's... I don't know, that's the thing. And that's really the challenge with the the, the doing gel at yeah, home. You just don't it know. It really is. It's so important with gel that the light matches the gel. Yeah, the it's cat, very true. a little lamp that you would use for nail polish with a hard building gel. You have to use the proper lamp. Well, we'll make it work with this. People ask me that a lot too about the over curing, under curing. Yes. And it is a challenge when you're when you're kind of mixing and matching. Yes. You might not get, you know, where you've got uncured product on your skin and you've got that risk, but you probably will notice as you as you use the products more. I don't know if a DIYer would notice as much, but you'll notice that the product might be flakier or, you know, the nails don't last as long yeah. for sure. Yeah. And with acrylic, you've got to make sure your liquid to powder um, is good because that's where the problem lies. If yeah. you have it wet, it's not going to cure properly and allergies can start from that. So you really want to work your liquid to powder. But I do have to say, if you're learning your liquid to powder beads, learn it on cheap product but this isn't really that cheap was it yeah this isn't that cheap <laughs> i thought it was going to be you know we were going to be doing nails for ten dollars this yeah, is crazy no. yeah now my french was built in because they had the white acrylic powder in the kit but we didn't have any in your line that you were buying mm -hmm. so she bought a bottle of polish gel and she's going to paint it on yeah so we'll just do a quick little without any special brushes or anything we'll just do a quick little active it's a great improvision is that a word? Yeah. Okay. Improvisation. Improvisation. Yeah, this is this is hard to keep your hand in the same position for filming. That's why you like that blingy cylinder thing. Yeah, I got it. You want it? A little hand rest. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It's right here. I keep it handy. <gasps> oh my gosh. I, I really feel like I'm in Susie's seat right now. <laughs> Except I got stuff all over it. So turn it right there so it looks pretty. Oh, then I got that. Did you see that video where I got all no. over? No. Oh, there, there's a good spot. There, there's a okay. good spot. Yeah. Winning. Okay. So since you did kind of a reverse pink and white, I'll just yeah. do a quick active with the uh, active French. Right. With the brush from the bottle. I'm just filing mine up and getting it nice and... Okay. Now I have to make mine nice and smooth. This is fun. I feel like we're having a little nail party. It is kind of um, a little bit like playing like kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm getting too. <laughs> I love doing nails together. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. That's why I miss about um, working in the salon every day. You know, I love the camaraderie of the girls and the clients and everybody, you know, hey, what I'm up to lately. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, it is a very communal thing oh, yeah. to do. Yeah, it is. Oh, and there's one more. He also oh. asks in this, how would you like to change the industry? Where do I begin? This guy had a lot of great questions. Wow, who is this person? Um, we need to hire I'm this person. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. So it's A-L-A-D-U-N-S-A-N. -S oh, I don't but know about great that. Great questions. The really good questions. Yeah. There's so many things I love about the industry, but I think there's a lot of room for growth in many senses of the word. Yeah. And I wish, I don't know, that's, a, that's, these are really, I know. Really? Like, where did you get this person? I, this got, is, I got great followers, man. You should check out my followers. Holy great. moly. Great questions. Really good questions. Mm -hmm. Well, what about you? What do you think, Susie? Oh my goodness. I think I want to make it so that everybody gets the information and they can buy great products, whether you're professional or not. Yeah. And also, too, I get a lot of males wish that they wouldn't feel uncomfortable when they go into a salon. So sometimes they get mm. real, um, like, feeling uncomfortable going in because they want to get their nails done. And yeah. I'd like to see it for everybody. Yeah, that's, that's a good so, one. Yeah, that's what I would like yeah. to see. And then they ask one more. What one thing should beginners bear in mind? Which is a really great question. That is a really good question. And I definitely can't answer that one because I wasn't a beginner that long ago. I would say yeah. that you feel so down about yourself when you're right. first starting Confidence. out. And I wish I didn't because right. 
there's such an awesome journey that happens once you start taking classes and once you really start getting involved. Yeah. It's just a natural process. You start getting better and better yeah. and better. And I was just telling you that earlier today about the the ten year challenge, right? People sharing yeah. pictures about yes. ten years ago versus today. Yeah, and it's just it's something that naturally happens. So I wish I hadn't worried so much about it back then. I would have to say, um, not so much pressure on yourself, and especially in the time department. Yeah, you don't want to hurry and learn how to do something fast. You haven't learned how to perfect yet. I agree. So learn how to do this task good first before you learn how to do it faster. So just take a breath and just take your time. Yep, yep. I actually got a, a Instagram message from a 13 year old this morning that was asking me the same thing. What would I recommend for beginners? And I think everyone has their own nail art style that they develop, yes. but not many people are good at the fundamental technical skill right. part. Yep. And I think that's something that if you really focus on that, you can stand out from the crowd in a heartbeat. Yep. And 13-year-olds, I mean, in five years, they're going to be our nail techs. Can you believe that? Yeah. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. And I remember being 13 and a half with my first set of pink <sighs> and whites and just loving them. Yeah. I remember being six years old and polishing nails. Just yeah. loving nail polish, like going to my grandma's house and playing with all her nail polish that she had. Oh God! And look where we are. I know. I miss Lee Press on nails. I wish they. I wish I could have make a comeback. I used to have <laughs> full sets of every color, every length, and my, my teeny little funny. fingers. Yeah. Okay. So do you just top coat? Just top coat. Okay. I'm good to polish, and let's check out the review shop. Sounds good. Hey. So let's assess the damage. I feel like it's actually pretty good. The only yeah. thing I find is a lot of bubbles. And I think I attest that to the brush because the brush was so wiry and like curly hair. You know? Yeah, this thing is. It just held on too much air in there. Yeah. So I think that's what the downfall. The product wasn't that bad. To yeah. Be honest. I, th I, I really don't see a huge difference no. between the products that are available to professionals and the products that are available to DIYers. The only thing I would have to say is, again, I think I definitely see a difference in the brush and I would also say that with gel, when you're that limited on different viscosities and different yeah. kind of, you know, um, textures as far as finished product, it does make a difference in yeah. the outcome. I agree. And for me, the, the acrylic wasn't that bad and the monomer wasn't that bad either. I just found it's quite bubbly and I didn't have much of a choice of different colors, but you didn't either. But, yeah. You know. yeah. So it was a lot of money we spent for, for thank goodness we can do nails because we made it look pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Elizabeth. I had a great time. Yeah. Thanks so much. Mm, Elizabeth, the Nail Hub. Bye, guys. See you guys soon.